Hello and welcome to another unboxing review and this time we have Dendometers. Well, before we go anywhere, let's just say a huge thank you to Games Workshop. They sent us along a copy of Indomitus. We are extremely privileged to receive this. So happy to have it. Um, so, yeah, huge thank you. On top of that, we've actually had some time to uh, get familiar with the rules, yep. do a couple of test games. So it's absolutely fantastic all before the release. So, um, yeah, just amazing. Without further ado, though. Let's get into the box and uh, see what's in there. Here we go then. Um, this thing is a huge, heavy duty box. box. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of weight to it actually. Ah, ah. Slow reveal. Slow <laughs> reveal, slow reveal into some incredible artwork. Oh my goodness me, that's beautiful. Love it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's actually got quite a grim, darky feel to it. Yeah. The face of that guy is absolutely battered. Yeah. Wow. Like okay, fantastic. But whole heap of plastic. I must say, I, huge this amount is, of plastic. This box seems to have so much in it. Like you know, as a as I guess pseudo starter boxes go. You get a yeah. lot in this one. Okay, let's get into this, though. We're going to have a quick look at what we are. We've got the two characters side by the, side. My favourite character, just with a skeleton on his shield, because yeah. he's that hardcore. Dead Necron on his base. But we'll go into close detail again. Um, what appears to be two more... Um, Lieutenant. Yeah, and lieutenants, isn't one it? One of yeah. the new... Or is it Lieutenant? Oh, oh, I guess oh, British, I'll start man. that. Yeah. Here we go. Bikes. Bikes. Love the I like new these. Primaris you, bikes. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of jive about clearance and stuff like that, but, you know, sci-fi, isn't it? Yeah, sci-fi. It's just sci-fi. Leave them alone. Let's move on. Um, a whole bunch of cool Necrons. Yep. Some of the new um, Cryptarch oh, stuff. Man, these things are huge. Oh, oh, wow. Check it out. That's part of his arm, right? We're coming back to that. Right, big Necroni beastie. We'll Some cover all of these as we get into it. Yep. Loving it, loving it. So fantastic. There is battle damage. That's caused some hoo ha in the Necron players. Because, of course. Hey, look. You know, if your to... skin scars, living metal gets damaged. Well, that's I think how the I thing feel. is. Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, of course, is even if it reanimates, um, it doesn't necessarily completely repair itself, does yeah. it? I mean, maybe after the battle's finished, yeah, it maybe, gets put yeah. to a shiny polish. It just again. kind of scabs over, doesn't it's it? Mid battle. It's mid battle. Bunch of Marines. Chain swords. Chain swords. Chain swords. The new Necron Warriors. Which looking, are amazing. They're great. The weapons and the are fantastic. Scarab teams. And the new Scarabs the are new fantastic. Scarabs are cool. We'll come back to that in detail. Again. Again. More same screw again. I can't believe that. Then this is, is the new Heavy Marines, the Vexilla, and the new Gladiator that Shield. That banner is insane. Okay. Love it. Same artwork again. Yep. Cool. Uh, a little bit damaged, but that's what it's there to do, yeah. isn't it? It's there to protect everything. Oh, more importantly, it's there to protect this oh, core book. Look at the chunk of that. I mean, everybody knows I like them big <laughs> and I like them chunky, but this is a chunky rule book. Yep. That's amazing. Liam's dog will be pleased. <laughs> hey, by the way, his nickname is Chunk. Okay, right, we'll get into that. We'll get into the book. And then we appear to have what instructions. instructions, and I'm guessing if we whip this open, there's usually the kind of little campaign semi gaming pack in there, isn't yeah, there? So, what the, the edge of silence? Here we go. So, okay, we'll just quick flip some okay. background fluff, and then yeah, rules. The rules. Okay, cool. Whoop, we got some. Oh. The uh, uh, what is that special edition hardback edition ebook and audio book available to order in June 2020? Indomitus, nice. Might have to check it out on the audio book. Okay, ah, we've got ourselves some um, transfers. transfers. It's been a while, company markings. Hello, transfers. Is that Space Wolves? Yep, Blood Angels, Space Wolves, Dark Angels. It kind of depends what I guess it depends what chapter you want to do, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Well, look, you can even do traitors. <laughs> there we go, faces. Lots of faces. Some weird stuff going off there with the pattern, isn't it? It's just how it's formed, I think. It looks like it's been CNC'd, to be honest. Yeah. 
I mean, obviously the master has, but you know, it's interesting. And then what else have we got here? More bases. More bases. And lots of holes, actually. So it looks like these things are going to position in into the pegs. Yeah. Okay. Let's put all of this on one side and have a look at the model. Here we go then. This is the Primaris Captain. Um, and of course, famously from the uh, preview video, the dude with the skeleton on his shield. This yep. is just amazing. Look at the size of that thing. That is absolutely ginormous. I was looking for a little um, something to show the scale of it, there, but that's a good 40 mil. In fact, actually, that's the top of a 40 millimeter base. Yeah. So it gives you an idea of the size of the shield. Um, little bit of a dead Necron on the floor there. He's not happy. Nice detail on the base. This rock section is fantastic. Check out that sword, power sword. I love how the sword's handle is like a mini hammer. That the I think hilt. You could bash a Necron's head in with. Why not? Why right. not? It does yeah. actually. There's brutal. There's bits of design work right on the end of that as well. Though. Yeah, it's like a little spike. So My goodness me, the detail on this is insane. Yep. Wow, fantastic. And then we also have the Necron Overlord. Overlord, yeah. Yep. Let's just check him out. I mean, look at this. The tassels coming down. Absolutely fantastic. I just want to check the front of the body out. This guy is huge as well. Isn't yeah, he? yeah. Absolutely ginormous. Um, and the weapon, again, just incredible. With the power hose coming out of the spine. Mm. <laughs> That's so cool. And what has he got in his hand there? What is the weapon that this guy um, has? It might be a his tachyon arrow or something. Is that, maybe? He's got this weird little. Yeah, know. it's the tachyon arrow. That's it. An oh, arrow okay. comes out of it. Oh, from one of oh his right. Hands. Okay, yeah, yeah. Look. Okay, so it like sort of shoots that forward. Yeah. Through time and space. Yeah. That you is get, very cool. Yeah. Let's just check out his face as well. Oh, he's looking suitably happy with himself, oh, isn't yeah. he? Necron's always wow. Like a smile Great kiss. And chuckle. Well, here we go. Moving on to the Primaris Lieutenant and a uh, really, really cool weapon there, the Neo yep. Vulkite pistol. Another addition to your Codex Primaris Lieutenant, so the, if you want But the Vulkite pistols, a they were a um, They were like, I think they were introduced in the Heresy. Right. They're the ones that just, they like, they shoot you and it just keeps burning away at you oh, and nice, stuff. Nice, nice. Shield is fantastic again. Yeah. Look at the purity seals. Very cool. Very cool. Just checking out the body detail, kneecaps look, with the skull on and the yep. detailing. It's quite nice to see like more and more detail getting added to these Primaris models. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it looks like uh, um, whilst I play Eldar and Tyranids and Gene Steel Cult, it looks like I am finally going over to the Boys in Blues yeah. with this kit. I'm um, looking forward to that. Right, we also have a it's Necron. a Royal Warden. Royal Warden, nice. What weapon is that then? That's the it's a um, Relic Gorse Blaster. A Relic Gorse really. Blaster. It's like Gorse it. Blaster, but just better. I like it. Look at the and you blade. no longer have to bother with the horrible green perspex rods. <laughs> I don't. Know, I kind of like them, but I also get why they've yeah. dropped them. If you know what I mean. And at the end of the day, there's more sort of painting opportunity, isn't there? I think. Yeah. Again, the little power cables coming out of the bottom of the, the spine piece. The uh, tomb tassels as well coming off his arm. Yeah, the little the shape of the little grave. Yeah. Uh, sorry, the well coffins aren't they? Yeah. The kind of coffin shape. Yeah, tassels. And again, that spine. I really like how they're going back to kind of that big spiky spine with the power cables yeah, coming out of it. That's nice. This dude is huge. I yeah. mean, huge, huge. That's a good fifty mil high. Yeah. I think. Wow. Okay. Here we go with the Outrider squad. So there's three bikes in this kit. Yeah, one, yep. two, three. Um, again, it's just one of those things. I mean, you know, this is kind of more the traditional kind of Primaris design now. It's a lot simpler, a lot junkier, a lot squarer. Mm. So from a detail perspective, you know, still impressive. Um, the thing that strikes you, of course, is the size of them by the time you get the front wheel on here. Yeah. You know, these are big models, basically. Um, but so they should be for a to mount a Primaris on. Because let's face it, Primaris are big lads themselves. Yeah. Some cool face detail in there as well. I might have to zoom in a little bit. Yeah, here we go. Look, I mean, these, these things almost paint themselves. I know that's a little bit glib, but there's so much detail on that face. I don't know whether you can see the eyebrows, the cheekbones, mm. um, and the jowls even. It's incredible. Obviously, helmet alternatives. 
Yeah, that's cool, man. Very, very cool. Love the chainsaws, of course. Oh, of course, chainsaws. <laughs> what more could you want? Right, this one is the H frame, and as such, has three models on here. We've got yeah. the Plasmaster. Plasmaster. Yep. We have the uh, Scorpec Lord. Scorpec Lord. And uh, the, uh, is it Canoptic the... Reanimator. Yeah, the Canoptic Reanimator. Oh, I think it also huge. has the Crypto Thralls on there as well, like these little guys here. Oh, they, these yeah. are all the crypto these, little, these little dudes hanging around at the back there. Very nice. Let's have a closer look. Well, let's just pick out some detail as we can see. That there is, this is what I was referring to earlier, really. A little bit of battle damage contained on this one. But it's absolutely amazing. Lots and lots of detail. Really interesting painting challenge. And again, you just get the sheer size of these guys. They're huge. Who, yeah. Is this the... That's the Plasmanster. That's the Plasmanster and his weapon. What is this? A Plasmic Lance, Lance yeah? yeah. Wow. Ginormous. I mean, that's a good 40, 80 millimeters long, something like that. What is this? This is the blade to the Scorpec Scorp Lord, yeah. isn't it? Scorpec Lord. So we've got... It's um... the Hyperphase Harvester. <laughs> Uh, interestingly enough, his arm is just the weapon. I yeah. quite like that. So you just got yeah, I quite there. like how they're just like these things are just weapons yeah, at just, this point, aren't they? Because they're just kind of like a part of the destroyers, aren't they? The body as well, huge. This guy is beefy. Let's look at the size yeah. of that chest piece there. I just put my thumbnail next to it so you've got an idea of scale. Uh, and by the way, I've got big thumbs. Um, huge arm on this side as well. I quite like it with a big sort it's of big, power claw. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, there's so much detail in this. Um, you could spend a long time picking painting. Well, down. it's one of those things. You could spend ages picking it all out painting, or you could just go for the whole, you know, yeah, like, it kind of lends dry, itself brush it. to both sides of the painting, which quite works like. really well. Yeah, yeah. The legs on this dude are huge. He's just a big fella. Wow. Quick look at the Assault Intercessors. I mean, you know, nothing much to see here. We've got Intercessors, but what have we got? We've, interestingly enough, Plasma Well, not only that, but also a replaced arm looks. Robo-arm, yeah. Plasma Pistol, yeah. Exactly. Um, and, of course, Chainsaw. Chainsaw. <laughs> beep, beep. Fantastic. Um, I was just looking through the range of heads, actually. Is there any... No, they all appear to be helmeted, don't they? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is the new form destroyers. These are the Scorpec destroyers. Scorpec, score, score, peck, heck, destroyers. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we probably ought to work this out better. Um, yeah, just fantastic, cool little models. I love these extra little. You see these little dangly arms off the sides here. Yeah, little limbs hanging off. There them. for the plasma sites that go with them. <laughs> They're so cute. Yep, that's amazing. Okay, we've got quite a lot crammed into this brew. We've got the chaplain over here, the Blade Guard Ancient, the Blade Guard Veterans are on here, is that right? Yes. And the guys with the big heavy guns, what were they called again? Uh, they eradicators. were the Eradicator Squad, yeah. Um, I mean, let's just zoom in on some detail because there is some interesting stuff to pick up. Just picking up on the Blade Guard Ancients banner again, just the level of detail is insane on this. You've got like three, four purity seals. And the skeleton just pinned to it. And a little sort of dangling um, piece of detail there. I'm trying to think what that is. Some kind of medallion or something like that. But just amazing. Love the little skeleton hand he's holding mm -hmm. onto at the end of a chain. That's amazing. And then over here we have the chaplain as well. Yep. So, again, just looking super cool. Love little bits of detail like on the pol uh, the leg the leg pauldrons. Uh, that's probably not what it's called. Um, but I quite like how the feet are designed on this as well. And then if we get to the eradicators, just uh, it's upside down, so I'll spin it around for you. But just look at the beefiness of the eradicators. This huge, chunky... They kind of remind me of uh, primary versions of the Dark Reapers, really. You well, know, they're, like, yeah, they're meant to be um, yeah. in Gravis armor. So they, yeah. do, they do have... It's Mark V Gravis armor now, so... Wow. Wow, oh, they're getting through their versions, aren't yeah. they? Bless them. And here we have two... You get two of these sprues, basically, and this is the Necron Warriors yep. and the Scarabs, of course. Yep. Looks like you get two, three bases of Scarabs, 10 warriors, so that's mm -hmm. give you six scarabs and 20, 20 warriors. warriors in the box there. Yeah, 
Um, yeah, interesting to see it, isn't it? You're seeing, um, you know, some of the older models now, the base model getting battle really line getting... Interesting uh, as well, they've given warriors another weapon choice, of course. So you've got your standard Gorse Flayer, but now you've got the Gorse Reaper as well. Mm -hmm. Is this the Reaper? Yeah, the that's the Reaper, one, yeah. the double barrel. I so, quite like it. I quite like the shorter barrel. Yeah, it's shorter range, but it has more strength and more AP. Cool. That looks good. Okay, so this is just a quick overview of everything you get from the Marine perspective. We have the Primaris Captain, the Primaris Lieutenant, um, the Chaplain, and the Judicar. Yep. And then um, we have the, the three Outriders. The, the Veterans. The Veterans. And the and Lieutenants right on the, the side. That's the Lieutenant there. Yep. But then into the units, we have the uh, Heavy Eradicators, three of those. And then ten. It's not. It's a lot of models. Yeah. But that's a lot of models until you go. Oh my goodness me! So just looking at the Necron set there, that's the twenty Necron warriors. Six scarabs, three destroyers. Six pieces of scarabs. Three of the new destroyers, which I just absolutely yep. love. The destroyer lord. But it's just amazing. What a what a piece of kit. Just fantastic. Um, yeah, the Overlord. Is that the Overlord? Yep, yes, it is, isn't it? That's the Overlord. Um, and where's those little guys you were pointing at? Oh, it's there. You, do you only yeah, get one of a, those? Yes, yeah, so the Plasmancers go with the Destroyers. Oh, so cute. It's cute and then little dudes. they're the Crypto Thralls. Yeah, which is just, just the weirdest looking <laughs> yeah. things out, but um, you gotta love them. Just a quick look at the Edge of Silence booklet. Um, you know, it's it's got in Warzone Pariah, of course. Um, it gives you a little bit of background of what's going off and some nice little sort of background story. Um, yeah, he's, and that artwork, by the way, I absolutely love that artwork. That's inside the main rule book as well, but it's just insane. Look. Yeah. Just look at that thing. Just that big macro cannon Macro battery. cannon just firing out the side of the ship there. There's some kind of weird warp vortexy type thing, probably the Eye of Terror, who knows. But there's plenty of those things about nowadays. Um... Overview of the Space Marines, and likewise, you're then into the unit stuff, which we can cover yep. um, as we go through, yeah? Okay. Here we go, then. Without further ado, let's get into the core rulebook. Um, I love that. Franco is just a bunch of screaming faces. Yeah. So I just, this entire artwork is just insane. Mm. It's just fantastic. Interesting that Gilliman's kind of got wings behind him, which I'm somewhat confused about, but maybe somebody knows something, but... If just, makes me the model. Just, just, just screaming faces. Screaming faces. Nice. And Sums up uh, 40k. It's got a it's kind of Giga feel about that, yeah. hasn't it? A little bit, which is cool. I don't mind them. There it is, the classic it. artwork. Yeah, the the John Blanche. Yep. Classic Blanchitsu artwork. Fantastic. The old corpse emperor himself. Um, let's have a quick look at the uh, content then. We have a massive 364 pages. Yeah. It's huge. It is a hell of a book. But about um, half of that is law, and then the other half is the rules. Yeah, well, you're looking at the, the rules start at one nine two. One nine two. So yeah, you're about halfway through, aren't you? Before you start kicking into, um, you're literally halfway through. Um, we cover the Dark Imperium, the Saga Imperialis, um, Warriors of the Emperor, Lost and the Damned, uh, Xenos Invaders. Then we're into the rules. Yep. Um, covering open play, match play, narrative play, and then this rules appendix, which I think there's some interesting yes, stuff in there. Yeah. Of course, a full list of what the blast weapons are, the aircraft, rare rules, an interesting departure. Yeah. And the way they sum the rare rules up, basically, is... Just something that doesn't come up every game. It, rules that are kind of almost specific to certain unit types, mm. and if you don't field those units, then you rarely come across yeah. them. Um, so just, they've, they've separated them out. It stops the main rules being bogged down. Yeah, quite, exactly. Like, You've got this core rule. And then the rules term glossary. Okay. We're not going to spend too long on the fluff at all, but there's some nice bits in the book. I mean, this bit in the Imperium section. You've got a four-page fold-out section, basically, um, which covers different wall zones, like wall zone Baal, etc. Um, but we've also got the full seg uh, segmentum. Um, uh, map in there covering uh, the uh, Segmentum Obscurus, the Diabolicus Extremis as it runs through, uh, 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 um, rips the, the universe in half basically, but very, very cool, nice little thing. Put some stuff into perspective, there's the Tau Empire. 
<laughs> Bless them. Little, little town empire. <laughs> but yeah, really nice. Um, they've outdone themselves in fantastic, beautiful artwork. I'm just going to pick some of my favourite bits of artwork out. As well. Really quite like this sort of little triptych type thing going off, which has got all sorts of weird creatures in there, basically. Mm. Um, yeah, so, uh, I mean, clearly all chaotic to a degree in nature, or the very least weird Xenos. I mean, check out those sort of giant walking upside down tree mushroom dudes with guns. Yeah. Fantastic stuff. And some kind of weird creature with a gun on his head, basically. Um, yeah, cool. Well, this was a page that caught my eye for sure as we were flipping through. Um, you know, it obviously got some of the stuff that we've seen um, uh, at the time we've released this book. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, at the time we've received the book, though, there's been no mention of this at all. Yeah. Um, this is the uh, the Ultramarines draw upon an impenetrable fire base centered around the Hammerfall drop turret. Um, pretty cute. I like okay, it. Imagine getting close to that thing. There's just like two heavy flamers on each side just burning you all the way. Yeah, I like it. Love it. So, yeah, look forward to seeing that. I mean, by the time, of course, pre-orders are up, which I think is possibly our embargo, we don't know. We've been given a date, but we don't know what's happening on that date. Um, uh, But uh, no doubt that will be public, but fantastic little thing. Um, If not, it's very cool. Loving some of this display artwork stuff, Mm. you know, where you've got the Imperial Guard just kind of storming through the built cityscape. Um, which one's that one? Uh, that's not the Bane Blade. That's no, the... it's like the, one of the Shadow Sword variants. It, it is, might be like the Doom huge. Hammer or something. Yeah, absolutely huge. So cool. All the dudes lined up, look, uh, a bunch of Chaos Knights wandering in there. Ogrins, no idea what's going on. <laughs> Got a feeling this may have tipped the balance in the other direction, although there is a, a Chaos uh, a no. Knight there. Yeah. But, you know, slightly outgunned. Uh, there's a few lads coming in. That's quite incredible. I think for me, you know, coming back into 40K, um, the rules section was quite important. I was I was interested to see what they'd done to make yeah. it clearer and easier to kind of move through. And um, I really like this rules key that they start with. And, you know, they kind of go through the different things. Many sections in this rule book start with a bold title. The red boxes are typically found on pages uh, where a turn or phase is split into a sequence. Mm. And then um, I think this was quite nice. You get examples of the main rule text. This text will cover key concepts and instructions. So there's a narrative version of the rule. But then below that, after each chunk of rules, there's a red bullet-pointed summary. Uh, of the rules content so basically you can scan read and if you're looking for a rule there's all the rules listed in yeah. black and white with the context of how to interpret them yeah. if there's any kind of confusion um it's very good it's good for new players coming in it lays it out very clearly you know i mean they have been in the past it has been hard to understand sometimes you know you're flipping all over the book to try and figure out what's going off but this it just lays out in bullet points it says you can do this 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 and this and you can't do this and it all just makes sense and i like how they've kind of even broken out like a hints and tips section which i think is a great idea you know so if you're discussing pile in there's 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 room to talk about why you would and how you can benefit from it and how you can use it um also when we get down to here then um we see that uh the the advanced rules section containing things like uh the the psychic phase um and again you know keywords are contained in bold i mean nothing new there really yeah um but let's have a look at one of those um as as a good example we'll get into um, moving past here, basically, you know what? Actually, here's a great example: unit. Yeah. Um, a group of models from the same data sheet. Friendly models, all models in the same army. Friendly models equals all models in your. Op- uh, sorry, enemy models, all models in your opponent's army. Friendly units, all units in the same army. Enemy units, all units in your opponent's army. Yeah. And it kind of goes through and describes all of that. Um, and again, just this really quick, we can basically pick up the rules by just reading the red boxes. Unit coherency, two inch horizontal, five vertical. Each uh, model must be co- within unit coherency of one other model of its own units. 
Um, while it, a unit has six plus models, each model must be in unit coherency with two other models from the unit. Mm. Job done. That's yeah. everything you need to know Fix about unit out. coherency. Some nice little fluff up here, which kind of explains it a little bit more. Engagement range. Engagement range is one inch horizontal, five inch vertical. Models cannot set up with engagement range of enemy models. Yeah. Job done. Job mm -hmm. done, and we kind of covered that. We were flipping backwards and forwards when we were looking at discussing fly uh, the new aircraft rule, for instance. Yeah, because the new aircraft rules, the models still have an engagement range of one inch horizontal, five vertically, yeah. but you interact completely different with it in terms of move, charge, and yeah, all the rest. You can like move through the engagement range, you're just running under the aircraft, aren't you? And move across the space, you can literally just walk across the space yeah. as if it's not there, for instance, but you can't end your move within the engagement zone, yeah, of course, unless you've charged. And bear in mind that most aircrafts, of course, have that kind of supersonic rule, like yeah. the Eldar do, where you can't actually charge the unit and engage unless it hand to hand flying. unless you have the fly keyword. Yeah. But again, distances measured in inch always measure closest distance between base or hulls. Hull is any part of a model that does not have a base, can measure distances whenever you want. If several units are tied for closest, players resolving the rule selects which is the closest. Job done. Um, the only slight caveat there, um, uh, when it says, uh, you know, a hull, for instance, is any part of a model that does not have a base. I mean, arguably a wave serpent, I'd measure to the hull, but it, it does have a base. It has a flyer base, you know what I mean? Yeah, base, yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah, do you suppose. understand me? It's kind of like, I think they, they could have, um, you know, clarified it, but it yeah. doesn't really matter, I don't think. Um, wobbly model's still in. You know, nice. it's pulled to one side, basically. Looking at the battle round, this is where we see some of the biggest changes, really. We have a command phase, followed by movement, psychic, shooting, charge, fight phase, and morale phase. What is this? Uh, nice, nice clarity around out-of-phase rules. When resolving out-of-phase rules, all rules that normally apply in that phase continue to apply. Yep. Phase-specific stratagems cannot be used when resolving out-of-phase rules. Yep. Nice. Um, the command phase. Quick, quick one. What goes off in command page? Battle form, command point bonus. Gain one command point if army is battle forged. Resolve any rules that appear in, if it occur in the command phase. Progress to movement phase. See over Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Um, into the movement phase. I don't, you, you know, from what I remember, not much has changed in the movement phase, but again, it's really nice to see them using normal move models move up to M inches, and then advanced models move up to M plus D6 inches. It's yeah, now, and exactly. It makes and a lot of what sense. I like is, is, is tagging out normal move, advanced, advanced remain, remain stationary. stationary. These are uh, it's almost like keywords, yeah. basically. They're now in separate out. bits, whereas on before, top of that, they're just like, they always lump them into one thing and just jump into the back as well um one of the things that i found really useful was the the rules term glossary yep. where you know if you want to know for instance what counts as dice roll see treated as dice roll and th they've used this glossary to to basically redefine counts as is the same as treated as for yeah. instance and it's a nice little cross reference automatically hit if an attack automatically hits the hit roll is automatically successful yeah job done um so i quite and then strangely enough automatically successful if a roll is automatically successful do not roll any dice so you get this kind of again this this cross referencing yeah. to to kind of go into it I just wanted to pick up on a couple of other bits. We're not going to go through the whole rules because what we're going to do is we're going to jump into some test games, basically. So look on the description below because hopefully by the time this goes live, we've also managed to record a couple of test games as part of a, a launch into Warhammer 40k for our bat rep. So that's exciting stuff. Um, one thing I just wanted to pick up, objective markers are interesting. They actually have a physical size now. They're a 40 mil round marker. Models are in range of the marker when they're in 3 inch horizontally and 5 inch vertically. Objective markers controlled by a player with the most models in range. So that little, it's a little, you know, boost because it's no longer a pinpoint at the centre of the objective marker. It's actually yeah. the size of the base that's interesting. Um, objective secured is still in place. So no, again, as far as the rules are concerned, there's not been a huge amount of changes and, no. and certainly nothing that hasn't already been covered by Games Workshop yep. on the community site. So we don't need to go over too much into that. We'll 
probably do something on the missions as part of the battle reports. We'll jump mm -hmm. in a deep dive into the missions a little bit more. Um, after that, you are kind of into the discussion around detachments um, and, uh, you know, for instance, the size of the game. So nice, interesting point here, combat patrol, uh, power level 50, up to 500 points, three command points, right the way through to onslaught at, uh, you know, 201 to 300 power level, which is 2,000 to 3,000 points. Um, and 18 command points. Yeah. Interestingly enough, when we were doing the battle reports and designing the list for the battle reports we're about to film, yeah. we were going with, you know, do we do point or power level? Yeah, and we were looking at about 2,000 points was actually 100 power. For for both of us. Yeah, for both of us. We, like, yeah. we both had so a 2,000... Eldar yeah, and demons. No, Nurgle demons. Well, yeah, demons we both had a 2,000 point army. And I think I was 104 power and you were like 106 power. So it's really interesting because I think, you know, power is a super fast way of putting a game together. Yeah. And one of the things we've talked about is actually for these initial battle reports, because we're not really exploring competitive no. play, we will probably just film under power level. Mm. It seems to make sense. And, and to go, you know, probably through combat patrol incursions. Yeah, and, it, and it's one of those, when you're doing friendlier games, I don't think it matters as much because, you know, you're not going to be that guy and take every single upgrade under the sun. It, it's one of those things. If you're bringing the game to a table, chances are, I mean, if you're preparing for a tournament, then you've got a list yeah. and it's finite down to the points. But if you're just looking for a matchup against your mains, yeah, just, just go with power level. It you know, takes a lot of the stress out of making something. Yeah, yeah. You can and you know, and, what and, models are cool and what they have. And any vagaries in point difference are probably addressed by just, you know, the natural imbalances within yes. the game anyway. You yeah. know, that that's what happens. And the fact that this is more mission orientated now as well yeah. um i i think probably all irons out in the wash yeah um but we'll see we'll see because uh you know obviously there are ways of making a unit super powerful by buffing it with all the extra weapons and stuff but that's what we figure we'd try um you know again heavily covered but of course the you know the pro proliferation of command points and how command points both you know, um, uh, buy detach detachments and you earn uh, command points back by putting certain units within detachments, yes. etc. So, you know, this has been uh, well covered now, really, in terms of uh, Games yep. Workshop's coverage. It's interesting. I like it because it takes away from the soup, the min-max, you know, having some of your army from one, um, you know, cult and another part of your army from another cult and another part of your army from another cult. So yeah. you can really abuse that system to get a bunch of power. Whereas now you can do that, but it's going to cost you command points. So yeah, and for every detachment you take past the one your warlord's in, you're then going to have to start spending command points for that detachment. And at Strike Force, which is the standard game yeah, size, three, three detachments. detachments anyway. Yeah. You know, you're limited to three detachments, which really, I think, puts it down to the list. And, uh, you know, here's an example, combat det uh, patrol detachment, for instance, which costs two command points, but by simply putting your warlord in there, you get plus you two get, command points anyway. That applies yeah. to all of these uh, but battalion then when, detachment brigade. Yeah, but when you start taking your vanguards, your spearheads, your outriders, your lords of war, you don't get any command benefits. So they are going to cost you they're command points. They're going to cost you command points. That. And, you know, three. You know, yeah. they're not, it's not one. No. Um, uh, to state the obvious, it's it costs you. It yeah. actually does have a cost. Uh, super heavy detachments, command cost is three command points or six command points. It depends on how many lords of war are in there. Yeah, exactly. Remember, so the, first, spend... the first lord of war is free, though. Though. Yeah. So, so if you spend you three command points, you cannot include Titanic units in the detachment. Yep. That's cool. Really good. Okay, I really enjoy that new format, um, yeah. and that's what we're going to be really exploring. And to a degree, it's why we're not overly focused on what the points are going to cost. Mm. Plus, it's no secret we've been heavily invested in Age of Sigmar. So for us, this is uh, dipping our toes back into 40k, and it feels like a nice little stopgap. Yeah. No doubt, as we do um, further battle reports, you'll see kind of more points. fine point orientated lists. Um, okay. Interesting stuff all around strategic reserves, really. I think, you know, strategic yes. reserves arrive in the reinforcement step of the movement phase. Units cannot arrive in the first battle round. Battle round one, non. Battle round two, wholly within six inch of any battlefield edge, not to the enemy battlefield edge or deployment zone. Yep. Um, three is set up wholly within six inch of the battlefield edge, not to the enemy battlefield edge. So you, so can, you can now can go, go into, into the, the deployment, deployment zone. zone. Um, and then cannot be set up within 9-inch of enemy models. 
Yep. Um, strategic reserve units cannot make a move, advance, or fall back this turn. Mm -hmm. um, strategic reserve units always count of having moved this turn. I love the clarity of this. Yeah. So, and any strategic unit not set up on the battlefield by the end of the battle counts as destroyed. Yep. Great. Um, aircraft. Really interesting in terms of strategic reserves. Let's cover that one briefly. Again, I know that Games Workshop have covered a lot of this. They can be set up anywhere on the battlefield more than 9 inch from the enemy when they arrive from reserve. If an army is battleforged, aircraft can move off the battlefield edge and be placed into strategic reserve. If an army is battleforged and aircraft cannot make its minimum move, it is placed into strategic reserve. An aircraft can arrive from strategic reverse reserve in the next turn. Yeah, it's bringing back that seventh edition strafing of flies. They yeah, come on, they strafe, they go off again. And again, you know, there's some nice stuff around performing actions and the clarity of the rules that yes. come from the actions there. Um, uh, terrain heavily invested now with terrain. We have defense line, uh, defensible defense line, breachable, difficult ground, dense cover, unstable position, exposed position, obscuring, light cover, heavy color, scalable, inspiring. All of those having a different impact upon the game. Yeah. Models do not receive benefits of cover while on top of this terrain feature. It's exposed. I really like that because the, yeah. you know the uh, we've seen it where you get like some tower type terrain and somebody puts a sniper right on top yeah. of a tower and it's like no that's exposed. Do you know what I mean? It's mm. it's like if there's no cover up there, it's like actually you yeah. don't get a benefit. You might get a line, you know, a, a difficult to charge or something like that. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, um, I really like it. I think it's great that they're covering all of that. They give some examples of common features, uh, uh, common terrain features. So an armored container, for instance, is an obstacle. Um, it also has the terrain trait light, light color, color, scalable, and exposed. exposed position. So stand on top of a crate, you do not get cover. Yeah. Like it. It's yeah. just, and it's, in fact, it's keyword driven rather than each of these being a type. Mm. You go, okay, so there's no cover. What was this? Let's just, let's just focus on this. Light cover. Um, it's there. Sorry, plus light one cover. to save against ranged weapons. Yep, so plus one to save against ranged weapons. If you measure your line across yeah, it. Yeah, if you across. measure your line across it, yeah, exactly. And scalable, which means, means you, you can climb, climb up it, basically, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, only infantry, beast, swarm, and fly models can be set up or end move on top of this terrain feature. Yeah. Okay, not going to focus too much on this, but you see some example battle forces, uh, battlefields here, um, and you know, just looking fantastic. You'll notice the use of the cardboard mats, basically. Mm -hmm. um, that's what they've kind of they designed this around. I think forty-four by sixty is four of those mats uh, placed next to each other. Um, again, the strike force forty-four by sixty incursion is forty-four by thirty, so two of the mats. Um, and yeah, you know, incursion forty-four by thirty. More examples of incursion. I think actually that just covers the yeah the sizes they give. So it's two mats or four mats basically. We were actually going to try and do this for the battle reports, and I realised I don't actually have four matching mats. Yep. So we're just going to use a standard table anyway. And actually, interestingly enough, you know, the 44 by 60, all you're really gaining is, uh, you know, two inches each on the edge. Yeah. And then an extra six inch on each end. I actually quite like the idea of having the space because you can put some of your command point cards down and stuff like that. Um, I think it's quite nice. And there's somewhere for you to rest your book if you've got a six before table. Saying that, um, every all the missions and stuff are measured from the center of the yeah, table anyway, so it has little or no impact really having that extra space. Okay, of course, again, um, the introduction of secondary objectives, um, or, or at least the expansion of secondary objectives, if you like, I quite like it. Assassinate, bring it down. Um, this is an end game objective score victory to two, uh, score two victory points at the end of battle for each monster or vehicle. So yeah. I really like that idea that you've got these secondary objectives that you can really focus on, make yourself a monster killer list and, you know, go after people who are showing up with a whole bunch of big beasties. Yeah. Um, yeah, Titan Slayer scored 10 victory points at the end of the battle if one enemy Titanic model was destroyed. It's just impressive. It's nice. It's good. Uh, psy a psychic Ritual. End game objective score 15 victory points at the end of the battle if any unit from your army successfully completed the following psychic action three times during the battle. 
So you've got the Psychic Ritual. Psychic Action, Warp Charge 3. One Psychic Character unit from your army can attempt to perform a Psychic Action in your Psychic Phase if it's within 6 into the centre of the battlefield. So you've got kind of dictating where you need to be with yeah. models and what you do when you get there. Yeah. It's cool. Just wanted to have one quick look. This is Encircle, um, Eternal War Combat Patrol. Um, what's interesting is it looks like there's quite a lot going off. You've got the center of the board. It's nine inches up. You've got the deployment zone, which is six inches off the center line, six inches this way off the center line, and nine inches away from the center line. Gives you two deployment zones. Um, and then you've got these kind of two objectives. One is 16 inches across and three inches in, and the other one is six inches away from the center line, and the way you find out how far it is off the center line here is it's in line with that six inches of the um, deployment zone. What's interesting, though, is and the reason I've zoomed in is actually the inch squares are marked out. Yeah. So worst comes to the worst, you can even count them. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's just we'll get used to that quite quickly. Um, and I actually think because you're referencing from a center point yeah. probably makes life easier, maybe. Okay. okay. Just uh, to close off the book, really, I think a couple of important sections. The designer's commentary, which, of course, references, hey, there's a lot of battle terms out there. Uh, it's not battle terms. There's a lot of codexes out there that need, you know, some form of FAQ and amendment, for instance, the introduce <coughs> of, uh, of uh, aircraft keyword, etc. Um, so, yes, that's going to happen, basically. Um, <laughs> it also introduces things like a full list of blast weapons, along with a full list of aircraft vehicles. Um, so, you know, uh, from my perspective, the Crimson Hunter is in there, the Crimson Hunter Exarch is in there. I think it's fairly straightforward what that list is. There's no real surprises in there. This is that rare rule section we referred to right at the start. Um, and the kind of things that it kind of, uh, you know, covers, ignoring benefits of cover, for instance, doesn't yeah. always happen unless you're up against an army that does it, yeah. in which case there's some clarity about it. Um Improving benefits of cover. Units of psychers are in there. If a unit has more than one model with psyker keyword, you must select one of those models each time its unit attempts to manifest or deny a psychic power. Before you take the psychic test or deny the witch test, measure the distance and check visibility using the model you selected. Mm. So it's not from the unit. You've got to select a model. If you perils, it's that model that yeah. suffers. You know, it's that kind of thing, you know. Um. Yeah, shoot again. Again, just making them as clear as possible. Rules that allow a unit to shoot again can only be used on eligible units. You must completely resolve first shooting attack before starting the second. Mm. Things like that. There's just making it absolutely bullet clear, which I really like. No pun intended there. Um, and then finally, as I said, the section to me that I really liked was the idea of this full glossary now, um, which really helps. And the fact they pull a few things out as well in this glossary, so charging, for instance, dice results, characteristics, yeah. are all pulled out quickly, and then in between, um, weapon types, unit characteristics. Um, I just like it. It just makes it nice and simple and clear references. Pile in three-inch move that must end within the model close to the enemy model, page 229. Just this wonderful, you know, cross-referencing that um, I think Games Workshop have to be applauded, really, for how hard they've worked to make this book, um, you know, quite clear and understandable yeah. to read. And doesn't, although it's a huge book, doesn't feel too terrifying. Um, but for us now, we need to get building some models. Yep. Although we do have 40k armies. It's been a while since either of us played 40k. And we both said to each other, let's just wait for the new edition before we dive straight in. Um, yep. uh, uh, and it's here. So no excuses now, really. Um, from a channel perspective, um, we're really excited to be covering 40k again. It's always been uh, one of my first passions. Um, although, you know, no secrets, uh, we're really big um, Sigma fans for sure. Um, but, you know, Liam's all fired up about it. A lot of the local games are also fired up about 40k as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, for us, it's the start of uh, expansion back out into the 40k gaming as well. So, yeah, pretty excited. Maybe I'll finish off that last Warp, like, warp Spider Wraith Lord that I was working on. No. Yeah, I might. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon. See Thanks ya. a lot.